Good morning, everybody. It's BDF44 coming at you with another video. So I'm going to try to do as many of these today as I can muster. Uh, we have a big trade, a name that I thought uh, could be moved, but didn't expect to, to see moved today, uh, if that makes any sense. I figured at some point in time they would get rid of this guy. Uh, and I've made videos about it before, but we have a trade. We have it. Uh, so the Orlando Magic... Uh, first of all, they have acquired, <laughs> we're going to do it like that, Otto Porter, two first-round picks, and Wendell Carter Jr. Uh, in exchange for all-star center Nikola Vucevic. And Nikola Vucevic is playing out of his mind. He's been one of the best centers, if not uh, the best center, uh, consistently all year long. In there with, of course, Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. I don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? But he's he's a top five center this year, and he's playing out of his mind. Um, and he has been playing out of his mind for many, many years. The only thing that's ever been wrong with Nikola Vucevic is health, and he's kind of had that, you know, in the bag for the last couple years, knock on wood. But you know what? Chicago Bulls made a huge statement today. They have been teetering, I'd say, over the last season and a half, between uh, trying to transition from 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 rebuilding to to a team that has all star, not all star, um, playoff potential or play in potential at the very least, Nikola Vucevic puts them in a position to be a solidified playoff team. In my opinion, uh, they're going to have to make another move or two. Uh, I, we got to see what they do with Kobe White because I think the most important thing now is to have a point guard down there. So I'd imagine they're going to be in the runs for. Uh, Lonzo Ball, Kyle Lowry. Uh, I heard Malcolm Brogdon at one point was was in the mix possibly, but the Pacers have since said they don't believe they're going to trade him at all. But you can best believe the, the Chicago Bulls are now going to be looking for a facilitator of some sort. That's going to be very important since now that they've picked up Nikola Vucevic. Um, if you look down there in Orlando, <clears throat> what they've done, I think the most important thing for them is to have acquired those two first rounders, you know, and, and I'm not surprised if Vucevic was able to get them two first rounders, but they also got some talent down there. Of course, Otto Porter Jr. Uh, is somebody who's headed to Orlando now uh, that gives them yet another s small forward defensive type, um, somebody who can kind of help them hold things down while they wait for, uh, I can't think of his name at the moment. I never am able to remember these people's names, but uh, the small forward who went down with the uh, knee injury a year ago. While they wait for him to come back, uh, Otto Porter can can come in, slip in, and, and kind of do some of the things that he does. And then when he does get back, it gives them yet another defender to pair down there with him, another lengthy kind of uh, 3 and D guy to play down there with him. Um, Otto uh, is somebody who was on a pretty lengthy contract for a little while, but at the same time, he has big game potential. We've seen him have big games with the Bulls. Uh, so I think he can help a team, uh, and, and I think Orlando could do a lot worse with him, uh, without him rather. So I think they're happy with that, that part of the, tr with part of the deal. Um, and then you look at Wendell Carter Jr. going to Orlando, uh, another a young prospect. You could pretty much wrap him in as another first round pick, to be completely honest with you, even though he's been in the league for about two years, he still has some development to do, uh, had some injury issues here and there. People are kind of questionable about what his upside actually is at this point but we know that he can get better from here we know that he's had big play big game potential as well uh and can be pretty effective when given consistent minutes uh so i i, I like the acquisition if they have to lose an all-star center you might as well get a guy uh that you believe can uh come in and maybe turn into something one day so uh, with Mo Bamba kind of having a slow start to his career, they're not really sure where they're going with, with him at this point. I don't believe um, Wendell Carter kind of gives them another guy down there that gives them a little more uh, cushion. Someone who's not of the caliber of Vucevic that they have to pay a trillion dollars, but at the same, si at the same time, someone who keeps them uh, down there with some size and, and with some upside at that position. So I ultimately think this is a pretty good trade. Uh, for the Orlando Magic, given that they have to give up Vucevic. Now, could they have found deals uh, that may have had sexier names attached to it? I believe so, but I don't think they end up walking away with two first-round picks. And you consider the fact that this is an Orlando Magic team that's still missing a lot of players. 
um, you know, guys positions that they need filled and, and things of that nature. Uh, and with this draft being as uh, heralded and, and as uh, talented as it appears to be at the top of it, uh, you never know. You might walk out of there uh, feeling pretty good about those draft picks. So uh, the Chicago Bulls, again, I think they are a playoff team. I really do at this point. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has to play out that way. And those draft picks could turn out to be pretty good. Now, I don't know what years are on there. I don't know if they're protected. I don't know if they have uh, restrictions of any kinds. So uh, the level of what those first round draft picks are could vary. You know, if they're pick swaps, they're worth much more. more. So, you know, I'd have to look at the framework of the deal. This news had just dropped. So if there's other players attached to this deal, I wouldn't be surprised either uh, for that same reason. But all in all, you could just see that this is the type of thing I was talking about. You know, players that maybe you didn't expect to get moved today could possibly be moved. And I think Vucevic is a prime example of that. <clears throat> it was also another smaller deal taking place that kicked off this uh, trade deadline morning. Um, JaVale McGee is headed back to the Denver Nuggets. Uh, I think the, um, the Cleveland Cavaliers were able to get Isaiah Hartenstein as well as two picks of some sort. I'd imagine they're two seconds round picks. I think that's how that went. <clears throat> one from, I think one was from the year 2027 or something like that. So I have to check out the framework of that particular deal. Uh, for me, that just gives them a little more insurance uh, for, for Jokic if you're Denver. And if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers, um, from what I read, they had interest in Isaiah Hartenstein um, and just weren't able to draft him. He ended up going to Denver. So this kind of gives them another prospect that they like, um, as well as some picks that they could kind of use to do a million things with. So, you know, if anything, it's just kind of like, um, you know, you got to give them credit. Got to give Kobe White, not Kobe White, but... uh. I can't think of his name, but his, his, sec, his last name, but his, his uh, first name is Kobe, the GM of the Cavaliers. You give him credit for being able to turn JaVale McGee into some assets. You know what I mean? Uh, JaVale McGee looked like a buyout candidate to me. I didn't think at this stage in his career he would be able to, you know, kind of get that kind of haul. But because of the size uh, necessities, of, of, of the teams in this league. A lot of teams needing centers. I think there's a bit of a premium on centers uh, during this deadline. So JaVale's, I think they got the most out of JaVale in my opinion. And I think they did a really good job in, in finding a trade for him. And uh, him going to the Nuggets allows him to play on another contender, possibly walk away with yet another ring, which is absolutely phenomenal for a guy. And um, he still got it. You know, he did some good things with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, keeping his value as high as it is, um, you know, running around, doing the things that he does, keeping himself in shape. And I would have loved to have him back personally. But um, the Nuggets were able to pull a deal together for him. And uh, I think, like I said, I, it's not a, a needle-moving type of deal for me for either team. I'm not looking at this as something that's going to change life for nobody. But um, one more big that can give you some some insurance for Jokic. Um you know, somebody who could be a lob threat, somebody who could block some shots, somebody who can ignite your team and, and really uh, give you some, 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 some real energy and some championship experience. And, of course, somebody who's played for the Nuggets before. You know, he played with the Nuggets for four years. Um, so at this point, you know, this is just going to be a reunion, and I think it could be a good one. So, yeah, that's what I got to say, man. My name is BDF44. I'll keep this going as their trades come in. Uh, I'll try to make some videos. I heard some interesting rumors out there. Um, got to pay attention to Lonzo Ball. Got to pay attention to Kyle Lowry. Those are the two names that I think are, are definitely on the move. Um, so we'll see. My name is BDF44. I'm out.